Don't get nasty, my little friend. Your bump is not going to hurt you one bit. Just relax and sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. And in the morning, you'll find yourselves in your new home. And in my pitch. <laughs> Good morning, Doc. What you got there? Ivan, I found some new friends. Listen. Wasp, you better be careful. They can sting a man to death. Don't worry. We understand each other. They know who their friend is. They can tell. Yeah, but they know when you ain't, too. Uh, nonsense. If you knew about wasps what I know, you'd have no fear of them, my boy. see you out here in the field, sir. How, how are things running at the front office? Smooth as honey, Renfro. <laughs> I see here you turned in over a thousand pounds of orange blossom honey and 400 of beeswax last month, Renfro. Congratulations. You've made the top of the list again. Thank you, sir. Holiday honey needs your kind of man, Renfro. You stay with it, and I can see a bright future for you with the company. Well, I do try to do my best, Mr. Barker. I try to take my inspiration from the bees. Always busy, busy, busy. Yes. Uh, what about this fellow, Dr. Zinthrop? Zinthrop? <laughs> Boy, that's a nut. Him and his bees. You know, it wouldn't surprise me someday to see him flapping his arms, taking off after some queen bee with the rest of the drones. Mm hmm Well, he's paid to do research on royal jelly. Haven't had a progress report from him in a month. Well, he has a little workshop up there back of the orange grove. Keeps a few colonies. I suppose I'd better go up there and take a look. Hey, you! Where's this fellow Zinthrop? Oh, he's up where the extractor is, up there. Mm. Hey, hey. This isn't a honeybee. These are wasps. Wasps? Who's responsible for this? Most likely Dr. Zinthrop, sir. I told you it was a crackpot. Zinthrop, huh? Zinthrop.
Zinthra! Zinthra! Now look here, Zinthra, what's all this nonsense about wasps? I'm so glad you dropped in, Mr. Barker. Mr. Barker, I'm on the verge of a great discovery. Discovery? What do you mean? Well, sir, I almost perfected a new method of extracting royal jelly from the queen wasp. According to my figures, you're better at extracting funds from the company. Now look here, Zinthrop, over a thousand dollars last month for miscellaneous. Yes, yes, I know, but Mr. Barker, let me just show you something. Just let me show you something. Already I've learned to slow the process of aging. Soon, I shall be able to reverse it entirely. What are you getting at, Zinthrop? Look, what do you see? I see a big dog and a little dog. Let's say an old dog and a young dog. All right, so what? Well, they're exactly the same age. You see, the little one, Greta, has been given regular injections of my compound from the queen wasp. Just like I told you, Mr. Barker. Now look here, Zinthrop. I understand about science and progress and all that, but you were retained to extract queen bee royal jelly. Now, it's a health food, a, a cosmetic. It, it's not a, a miracle drug or an elixir of youth. That sort of thing is impossible. Oh, but Mr. Farkas... Zinthrop, I, I'm sorry, Zinthrop, but I'm gonna have to let you go. You just don't seem to be one of the team. You, you understand. Good luck. I'm sure you'll fit in somewhere. Fit in somewhere. Oh, no, no, don't worry, my friends. We shall find a home somehow, somewhere. Oh, but you sound impatient. I know, it's your babies, huh? They're hungry and uh, they must be fed. Uh, now, now, how would you like a nice, juicy little caterpillar, huh? Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? There. Now, you must eat them. Be strong because, well, we have a lot of work to do together. Yes, sir. A lot of work. As you can see, gentlemen, sales for the last fiscal quarter have dropped. Fourteen and one half percent. There has not been a corresponding drop in our competitor sales. I trust one of you gentlemen has a satisfactory explanation for this decline. Not one little suggestion, gentlemen. We'll start with you, Thompson. As public relations manager, no doubt you have some faint glimmering of what's happening to Stalin products. Well, Thompson? Well, you see, I... Uh... I had no idea you were such an excellent public speaker, Thompson. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Darlin. I guess I'm not feeling very well this morning. I'm sorry you aren't. I think I can tell you why Stalin products are falling off so badly, Miss Darlin. We're listening, Lane. Where would you put the responsibility for this decline? On you, Miss Stalin. I imagine you have arguments to support that contention. We've all been looking at it for the past 20 minutes. The most convincing argument is right on that graph. May I show you? Thank you. Now, right here in April is when Stalin sales started falling off. Very clever of you, Lane. Would you mind waiting until I finish, Miss Starlin? That's enough, Lane. Relax, Willis. My apologies for the interruption. Go on. Thank you. Now, as I said, sales began to fall in April. 
But the reason for the fall was back here in February. Uh, Stalin products have always been thought of as something of a, a modern miracle in the cosmetics trade. A firm built to a multi-million dollar a year business on the strength and appeal of, of one person, Janice Stalin. From the beginning right through until February of this year, only one woman's face was used to advertise those products. Your face, Miss Stalin. The public have come to accept you as a, as a symbol. Well, now, after 16 years, they see a different face. They, they don't trust it. They feel cheated. The simple fact is that Stalin Cosmetics should have Janice Stalin's picture advertising them. Well, that's about all I've got to say. And a darn good job of saying it, too. I agree. Uh, Lane makes a lot of sense on that score, Miss Stalin. I think I've had enough flattery for one morning, gentlemen. It was a very convincing argument, Lane. There's a Mr. Simthrop to see Miss Stalin. There's only one small factor you've overlooked. Not even Janice Stalin can remain a glamour girl forever. Miss Stalin. Yes, Mary. There's a Mr. Zinthrop in reception. He says he has an appointment. Thank you. Well, this has been a very informative get-together. It'll be all for now. Oh, Arthur. Yes, Miss Dunn. I'd like to see you in my office, please. Sure, Miss Dunn. Take it easy, Hotshot. Something on your mind, Miss Stalin? You've done some work on royal jelly, haven't you? Oh, a little. Are there any real therapeutic values in it? Oh, I'd say so. Of course, uh, a lot depends on each individual's reaction to the stuff. What do you mean? It's just that no two people react in precisely the same way. One man's meat's another man's poison. Oh. But you think royal jelly can be beneficial in some cases. Queen Bee said a lot of stuff about it. I'll accept that as an affirmative answer. Supposing a more powerful form of royal jelly could be obtained. From the Queen Wasp, for example. I mean, well, do you suppose that might have some rejuvenating effect on a human being? I'd stay away from wasps if I were you, Miss Dolan. Socially, the queen wasp is on a level with a black widow spider. They're both carnivorous. They paralyze their victims and then take their time devouring them alive. They kill their mates in the same way, too. Strictly a one-sided romance. Well, I'm, I'm not exactly interested in, in the love life of the queen wasp. I want your opinion on the possibilities of using enzyme extracts from royal wasp jelly, commercially. Well, if you want an honest opinion, Miss Stalin... Of course I want an honest opinion. Then my advice is forget about it. Thank you, Arthur. Any time, Miss Stalin. Have Mr. Zinthrop come in. Yes, Miss Darlin. Uh, you can go in now, sir. Oh. Oh, come. Janice Starlin Enterprises. Miss Darlin? Yes. How do you do? I'm afraid I won't be able to give you much time, Mr. Zinthrop. But it is I who give you the time, Miss Darlin. Oh, yes. Plenty of time I give you. Ten, maybe fifteen years I give you. I want you to understand one thing very clearly, Mr. Zinthrop. I expect absolute proof of what you've claimed in your letter. Tangible proof, not words. <laughs> Such proof you shall get, madame. And more. But I think I'd better show you in the laboratory, yes? Look. They look terrible. 
Why don't you put them out of their misery? Madame, you ask for proof. Please be kind enough to look at proof you ask for. May I proceed? Thank you. In a few minutes, madame, you shall see a miracle you shall not believe. Oh, no tricks. <laughs> you may look if you like. I have no tricks. Well, don't look at me. <laughs> I'm not changing. See, you do not believe one animal, so I bring two. I, uh, I show you again, yes? Yes, I must be sure. Yes, madam. Darling, does my uh, secret have interest for you? Yes. What are your terms, Mr. Zinthrop? First, I must have a laboratory equipped with everything I need for my research. If we're successful, well, I ask for a little percentage. But I must get full credit for my discovery. That is most important to me. I'll have Gordon draw up the contracts. Oh, contracts, contracts I do not need. You give me your word. Good enough for me. You amaze me. Frankly, when I received your letter, I thought you were just a, another eccentric. But there was always a chance you might not be. Then you walk in here and show me nothing short of a miracle. Two miracles. And you say that you'll accept my word that I won't cheat you. You won't. I know you're a good woman, even if you do not like other people to know it. However, uh, my formula may not be good for human beings. I have not tested yet. You will on me. Oh, no, 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 no. There might be danger. Those are my terms, Mr. Zinthrop. Janna Stalin will be your next guinea pig. Very well. Though it may take a little time to prepare sufficient extract, a week, maybe more. I'll make whatever arrangements you may need for your equipment. Thank you, madame. Now I see how you built all this. <laughs> I'm very close to losing it, Mr. Zinthrop. Maybe working together we can save Janice Starlin Enterprises. Maybe even make it bigger than ever before. Yes. Oh, yes. I'm sure the next three months we'll see a rise in Starlin sales that will surpass anything we've dared imagine. Mr. Zinthrop is working on the final stages of a development that will revolutionize the cosmetic industry. He's to have a free hand in his experiments and will be answerable to no one but myself. At the moment, I cannot divulge the nature of Mr. Zinthrop's experiments, but I can assure you it will bring worldwide recognition to Janice Starlin Enterprises. <laughs> Must be the granddaddy of all confidence men to take in a guy like Starlin. 
Well, why doesn't somebody wise her up? Like you, for instance? Bill, what makes you think Synthrop really isn't on the level? After all, we don't even know what he's working on. It could be very legitimate. Oh, you are as bad as she is. Oh, women. <laughs> Men. Every time you're stuck for an answer, you always come up with women. You're not getting out of this one so easily. I'd like to know why you think Zintrup really hasn't got something. Well, you can call it male intuition if you like. It's just that there's something about this whole business that doesn't smell right. The private laboratory, the secret experiments, Zintrup himself. The only thing that's missing is a genie with a lamp. You better leave the intuition to me. I'll let you buy me dinner. Buy you dinner? What's happened to your sporting blood? I thought we were going to toss for the check. Oh, no. You won the last three times. All right, look, I'll make a deal with you. Dinner is on me if you promise to keep an eye on what goes on in there. Well, what do you want me to do? Read her mail and send you messages and keep your code? You could do worse. Oh, no, Mr. Cooper, not you, too. I've been trying to tell Bright Eyes here that I think Zinthrop is a phony and a confidence man. If I were sure of that, I wouldn't be worried. I think he's a lot more dangerous. A quack. Well, I don't follow you, Coop. Well, a confidence man would just be interested in your money. The only damage they can do is to your pocketbook. A quack can be fatal. <laughs> to him. I says, listen, Ivy, I'm getting sick of this TV every night. I mean, you know, we can do the same thing in a nightclub. Well, almost. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Janice Starlin Enterprises. I got two words for you. Drop dead. Twice. Irving, calls me to tell me Dr. Cyclops is on Channel 9 tonight. Oh, crust. You've seen it twice already. Good morning. Is, uh, is Miss Darlin in her office now? Hmm? Oh, Miss Darlin's in conference. Would you like to speak to her secretary? Oh, no, no, no. Just say to Miss Darlin, I should like to see her when she has time, huh? Yes. Was there something else, Mr. Zentro? No, 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 no. Goodbye. 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 What a character. A regular two-eyed Dr. Cyclops. Even the bow. Good morning. May I see Miss Zardling, please? <laughs> He's a real weirdy. I wonder what his game is. Who cares? You know, Morton thinks he's a crackpot. I heard him telling Cooper so. Old Bug Eyes really has the execs worried. About what? That's just it. They don't know. Oh. So anyway, back to Irving. Good morning, Miss Darling. Good morning. Good morning. I couldn't get away any sooner. Is it important? Miss Darling, do you remember the big cat I showed you last week? No. What about it? Well, I want you to look at him. Come. No. Quite a difference, yes? Say, Mark. Say, Gat. You're young again. Can you realize what that means? You're a kitten again. Your whole life to live over. How does it feel? I think perhaps you'll be able to find out for yourself, Miss Darling. Today, today will be your first injection.
What is it, Gleason? I sent you a memo. Mr. Zinthrop has carte blanche to order anything he requires. It is no concern of yours, Gleason. Make out a check for the full amount. Sue? Mary. Can I talk to Mr. Lanham? Bill? Hey, listen. Gleason just got a bill for $2,300. Zinthrop. Enzyme extracts. Yes, yes, we are making progress. There's great improvement in the tissue. Why is it taking so long? It's the third week. <laughs> you forget, my dear, there's more to you than a little kitten, no? Huh? Besides, there's a difference in metabolism. Why not increase the dosage? Wouldn't that step up the process? Patience, my dear, patience. We must tread lightly with care. Your arm, please. You know, I've been experimenting with the concentrated solution of the enzymes. Oh, a great deal more powerful than the solution I've been using in your injection. Oh? Yes. And I think, I think it will be better for lotions. As an emollient lotion, it'll make estrogenic creams and all such products old-fashioned. My dear, Stalin will be world famous, bringing you to millions. If you're right, Synthrop. Going to be a few red faces in my advertising department. But I am right. Why, your own mirror will tell you that I am right. Why, you look at least five years younger than you looked three weeks ago. <laughs> I know. Talk to Bill a minute, Sue. Thanks. Bill, I think I've got it. Yeah, I'm a nervous wreck. At lunch. At lunch. You'll have to translate for me, Coop. I'm not very good at that technical stuff. Pseudo technical. Uh, Mr. Zinthrop's a very capable confidence man, from what I read in this letter. He claims he can stimulate the processes of rejuvenation through the use of enzymes extracted from wasps. Oh, for... <sighs> well, what are you two Sherlock's going to do about it? Right now, I don't know. Frankly, I'm getting tired of the whole business. That woman's so intent on holding back time, she's ready to fall for the first phony line she hears. Wasps. Bill. Face the facts, Mary Janice Starland has built her whole life on youth and beauty. Now that she's losing them, she's scared to death. Well, right now, she's on cloud nine with that quack Zinthrop that I'd hate to be around when she comes back down to Earth. Well, maybe we can let her down easy. I think we owe her that much. Yeah. Well, what are we going to do? We can't just let Zinthrop build up her hopes and then knock the props out from under her. How can he do such a terrible thing? Poor Jan. There must be something we can do before it's too late. He's got a mighty convincing argument. Very impressive to the layman. Ten to one, he's got a record just as impressive. No there are ways to find out. The answer might be right here in our hands. Heads. I'm gonna keep this letter for a day or two. Wait a minute. Suppose she finds out it's gone. I'm the only one with access to that desk. She'll know I took it. Well, it's a chance you have to take, Mary. I think we can be pretty sure that Coop knows what he's doing, honey. Oh, come on, young lovers.
What is it, Maureen? It is you, Miss Dove. Of course it's me. Who did you think it was? Well, you, you look so different. Finish your nails. Maureen. Hmm? I think your phone is ringing. Oh. Uh, yes, Miss Starlin. Good morning. Janice Starlin Enterprises. Gentlemen. Janice Starlin Enterprises is about to start on the most widespread publicity campaign in the history of the cosmetic industry. Our slogan will be, Return to Youth with Janice Starlin. When Mr. Zinthrop arrives, there will be a press interview and all questions regarding the rejuvenation process will be referred to him. That'll be all for now, gentlemen. It's amazing. Why, it's wonderful. It's really amazing. You look marvelous. I said that will be all for now, gentlemen. Good morning. Oh, not you, Mary. Wait a moment, please. Yes, Miss Starlin. Mary, isn't it wonderful? It's a miracle. A wonderful, incredible miracle. We were so worried about you. We really thought you were in danger. <laughs> we even went to plotting how to, how to rescue you from Mr. Zinthrop. <laughs> it all seems so silly. It seems ridiculous. Oh, Mary. Mary, how old do I look? Tell me. How old? How old do I look? Tell me. Twenty-three, maybe twenty-two. Uh, tw <sighs> That's how old I was when I started Janice Starlin Enterprises. Do you realize what that means? I'm back where I started, eighteen years ago, with what it took eighteen years to accomplish. <sighs> it's like a dream. of quacks were treating people with monkey glands. It seemed to work for a while, and then the deterioration set in. That's awful. Do you think that will happen to Jan? I don't know. If I could just get inside of his lab and run a breakdown on what he's using.
centro. I want you to find him, Mr. Hellman. I don't care what it costs. We'll find him, all right. Sooner or later, we find them all. Time is vital, Mr. Hellman. Every hour he's gone, it means more than you can possibly imagine. Well, you haven't given me very much to go on. No home address, no former employer, no phone. This is just like starting from scratch. <sighs> Mr. Zinthrop wasn't a, a conventional employee. He didn't go through regular personnel. Uh-huh. You say he came here about a month ago. Well, how did he come here, Miss Starlin? He just didn't walk in off the street, did he? The letter. Right here in my drawer. Maybe uh, one of the other drawers. So that's what she meant. What who meant? Darling, the letter's been taken and you think you know who took it, is that right? My secretary, Miss Tennyson. You got her address handy? Her phone number. It might be better if I bust it in on her cold. This way she'll have a chance to prepare a story. I know what I'm doing. All right. Mary? Janice, darling. But before I went to lunch, I made a duplicate copy of Mr. Zendrup's letter. I was going to take that one to Bill and Mr. Cooper at first. But then I thought that the original would be better. Have you got the copy? Yes, it's in my desk. Get that copy, Miss Dennison. Uh-huh. 946 West 73rd Street, Manhattan. Yeah, that's right. Get right on it, Jerry, and check back with me as soon as you can.
Yeah. Oh. You're sure he's our boy? Uh-huh. Is he? Central emergency. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, it looks like we've got him. This is John Doe down at Central Emergency, auto accident. There's no identification on him, but he was wearing a lab smock and Phil Zinthrope's description. Mary, get my coat and Lane, get a cab downstairs. Is he badly hurt? Head injury, general contusion to the body. He's had a severe injury and there's definite brain damage. Just how much, we can't tell as yet. How long before you'll know? It's hard to say, Miss Starlin. Who's the best man for this kind of injury? Well, there's several top specialists. Get the best. I'll take full responsibility for the expenses. Yes, Miss Starlin. I don't know, Arthur. I think it best we wait. But it's been three days since the accident, Jan. And no sign of improvement. He's still in a coma. You heard what the doctor said. He may never regain consciousness. And even if he does, who knows how badly his brain has been damaged. Well, I'll give it another 48 hours. If he doesn't regain consciousness by then, well, you can take over the laboratory, Arthur. Jan, is it? It's my decision. front of our noses. I can't have used it all. I could run a qualitative analysis. It's right in the middle of a good program. to be the biggest advertising campaign in the history of cosmetic advertising. Every newspaper and magazine in the country will be flooded with our new slogan, Return to Youth with Janice Darlin. Excuse me, uh, Miss Darlin. What is it, Thompson? Well, I think we should be a little conservative, Miss Darlin. Uh, cosmetics are one thing, medications another. 
We're liable to run into trouble. Yes. All advertising copy will be cleared through your office. Well, it's a touchy business, you know. Max is right, Miss Starlin. You don't have to second the motion, May. I want one thing understood very clearly now, gentlemen. Janice Starlin Enterprises is going to bring the most fantastically saleable product ever developed by modern cosmetics to the public. And I don't intend to be restricted by timidity on the part of my own staff. Is that clear? Are you all right, Miss Tarlin? It's just a, just a little headache, Mary. I'm fine. Can I get you something? I'm all right. I'm all right. Thank you. I have some aspirin in my purse. It's all right, Mary. Well, that'll be all for now, gentlemen. I sure hope they give the girls working at Starlin first crack at that new stuff. Imagine being 18 again. I guess if it can take 15 years off Starlin, it can take 10 off you. What do you mean, 10? Face it, honey. This is Maureen you're talking to. Yeah? Well, if I were you, I'd take a double dose. Then maybe Irving wouldn't watch television so much. So who says he looks at it? I can't imagine what else he does. Three guesses. Say, did Cooper come in yet? Mm-mm. Missed a board meeting this morning. I bet Starlin's having a fit. He should worry. Uh-oh. See you later. Bye, honey. Hi, pretty puss. You know where, um, Miss Starlin's office is? Suite number one. <laughs> La-dee-da, the Duchess of Flatbush herself. How'd you like to have this phone wrapped around your ear, wise guy? It's more like it, sister. Sweet number one. Thank you. Miss Darlin. Oh, what is it, Mary? Is there anything I can do? Yes. Is, uh, is Mr. Zinthrop's room ready? Uh-huh. The nurse is fixing the emergency equipment now, and the ambulance is due any minute. Well, be sure to let me know when it arrives. Oh, Mary, please, before you go, could you see if you could work that thing? Oh, sure. I've seen lots of these. Simple enough. That'll be all, Mary. Thank you. Right. We've had a room especially made over for you, Mr. Zinthrop. And Miss Warren has a room adjoining yours, so there'll be someone near you at all times. Thank you. Thank you. When you're feeling better, Mr. Zinthrop, there are a few things I'd like to discuss with you. Good, good. We'll do everything we can to make you comfortable, Mr. Zinthrop. Yeah. I'm going to spend the nights here in my office. So if anything develops, I'll be on hand. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Can we start? <laughs> only, only there's a, something. I must tell you something important. But, important, but... Uh, I cannot remember. Uh, I'm sure it can wait. Uh, right now, the main thing is to get you back to help. Uh, Take good uh, care of you, Miss Warren. Yes, Miss Darling. Sure is funny about old Coop. He misses one day of work and you're ready to call missing persons. Well, he's a pretty conscientious guy, honey. If he felt sick or something, he'd have called in. 
relax. I'll probably be in Brighton and Chipper in the morning. Interrupting something? Oh, we were just having a little coffee clutch, Miss Starlin. We were talking about Mr. Cooper. What about Mr. Cooper? Well, about his missing the meeting this morning. Nobody's been able to reach him all day. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. Mr. Cooper's been here a long time. Probably feels he's entitled to take a day for himself now and then. That's what I've been trying to tell Mr. Lane. Oh, by the way, Miss Starlin, how is Mr. Zinthrop? Oh, fine. In a few days, we'll uh, start the layouts for the campaign. Oh, I'm ready when you are, boss. Look those over. Hey, Bill. Hmm? Don't go getting any ideas about the boss. Well, me? Don't be silly. I just wanted to know that I'm an eager member of the team. Still, she is looking a lot younger these days, isn't she? You think Zinthrop would give you any of those treatments? You know, break the watch or something? Lie down now. Oh, Go to sleep. Such, such horrible sound. Like, like a nightmare. Just a bad dream. <sighs> Lie down. Uh, Just a dream. Uh, uh. Tell Mr. Green that personnel is his responsibility. I have other things to think about than worrying whether the night watchman walked off the job. Well, that's just it, Miss Starlin. Mr. Green feels that the watchman never left the building. His lunch pail and his raincoat are still in the basement. I don't want to hear anything more about it, Mary. All right, Miss Darlin. We'll use these. Oh, fine. She swears she heard a scream from one of the other floors. Zinthrop heard it too, but she convinced him he was having a bad dream. Oh, maybe they both were. It's not funny anymore, Mary. There's something going on in that building. And I'm going to find out what it is. How? Oh. Have a look around Cooper's lab, for one thing. After that, I... I don't know. Hold it steady. Bill, this is crazy. We could really get in trouble. I won't tire him, Miss Warren. But it is important. All right, Miss Darlin, I'll be in my room. Synthrop. Synthrop, you've got to help me. Something's happening. Something's happening to me. I can't control it. There is something I must remember, but I, I can't. Try to think. The wasp enzymes. The extracts you you were experimenting with before the accident. Try to think. <laughs> well, this is Zinthrop's notebook, Mary. Notes on his experiments with Jan. Well, how did Cooper get hold of it? I don't know. If only Cooper would show up. Mary, look. It's Mr. Cooper's pipe. Well, don't you get it? He's going to go out without his pants and leave that pipe behind. He's still somewhere in the building. I bet a year's salary on it. If he is, he... He's dead. And the night watchman. There's only enough left for one more injection. One more. You've got to make more, Zentra. Help me, Zentra. Please, please, my head. Oh, my head.
he asleep? I don't know. Phil, don't touch him. If anybody knows what's behind all this, it's him. Mr. Zinberg. Bill. Look at... and everything else is still in there. She wouldn't go out without her purse. Bill, let's get out of here. I don't like it. The cat. The cat must warn her. Mr. Sintra. Who? Who are you? Well, there's nothing to be alarmed about, Mr. Sintra. I'm Bill Lane, and this is Miss Dennison, Miss Starlin's secretary. Miss Starlin? The cat? What about a cat? Must warn her. Injections. Must not take any more injections. Is Miss Darlin in danger? Terrible danger. I'm, I must... Take it easy, Mr. Uh, Zentrop. You're still uh, pretty weak. Mary, see if you can get Jan on the phone. All right. All right. There's no answer. Oh, Miss Darlin? Is that you, Mary? We're in the building. We're in Mr. Zintrup's room. Something's happened down here. Here, let in... me talk to her. Hello, Miss Starlin. This is Lane. Why are you and Mary still in the building? It's after 10. Oh, I must help. I'm Don't responsible. Don't interrupt, Mary. Uh, yeah. Oh, I must help. Uh, uh, I must not I hold can't me explain back. now, Miss Starlin. I must, I must go. Hang on to it. I must help. Uh, you must not hold me back. I'm... Don't worry, Mr. Zintrup. We won't let anything happen to Miss Starlin. Uh, What's going on down there? Stay in your office. I'll be right up. Keep an eye on Zinthrop, honey. I'm going upstairs. Oh, no. No, no. The insects. The insects. Take it easy, Mr. Zinthrop. You do not understand. Miss Darling, she's in danger. I, I must warn. Look, I'll have to I stay must... here. You go for Jan. Okay. When you get up there, call the police. You can't get outside on this phone. All right, all right. I'll hurry. Well, now the police. Sure, Mr. Zentrop. Now, you just relax and take it easy. Everything will be all right. We'll take care of those you whatever you call You do not understand. You do not understand that girl. You shouldn't have sent her upstairs. She's in danger. You must stop her before it is too late. Okay, as soon as the cops get here, we'll oh, take Oh, you fool, you fool. Miss Starling will kill her and tear her body to shreds. Miss Starlin, kill Mary? Miss Starlin is not a human being any longer. The enzymes have changed her. She will destroy the girl as a female wasp would destroy her enemies and then devour the remains. Then Bill found Mr. Zinthrop's notebook in Cooper's desk. Now, oh, no, there's no mistake. We've got to call the police now. Now, Mary, you're just getting a little excited. 
Now, who could possibly want to hurt Mr. Coop? I don't know. It's not only Mr. Cooper. What about... Stairs. Oh, look! Laboratory. She's going to laboratory. Get up the stairs, Pat. Oh, 